By the spring of 1883, seven full years after the completion of the towers and 14 years after work had first begun, the Brooklyn Bridge was nearly complete. It had taken three times longer and cost nearly twice as much as its designer, John Robley, had estimated. More than 5,000 working men, Irish and German and Italian immigrants mainly, had toiled for as little as $2 a day to build it, stone by stone, wire after wire, foot by foot. Erecting the great towers had been impressive enough, but what came after was even more astonishing. 14,000 miles of wire rope had been spun back and forth across the river and draped over the towers in four giant cables. From them, an avenue wider than Broadway had been suspended across a span nearly a third of a mile long. From below, the roadway seemed to float on air, supported without visible effort by its gossamer web of steel. Now, with the official opening set for May 24th, all that remained were the finishing touches. It's the beginning of heroic New York. This is where New York not only rose into the sky for the first time in, a, in an intentional way, but it was built to last. It was built to stay, built to be right there at the harbor where everybody was making their entrance from the old world to the new world, standing there uh, for all time to say, we didn't come just to uh, spend a little while we came here to this new continent, this new world, this new way of life to stay. We mean business. We're here. Five days before the opening ceremonies, electricians finished installing 70 electric arc lamps along the suspenders. Near midnight, the dynamos were switched on for the first time to test whether the lights were working. Commuters on the last ferries to Brooklyn looked up in astonishment as the majestic bridge shone out of the darkness in the blue and white glow. Whether they knew it or not, they were seeing the future, electricity and steel. The Brooklyn Bridge marks the beginning of what we might call the vertical city. And it's going to be able to go up. It's going to be more heroic in scale than are the towers of the Brooklyn Bridge because of the element of steel that's in the bridge because of the cables. You can't have high-rise buildings without elevators. You can't have elevators without cables of steel. You can't have the grid work. You can't have the, the skeletal uh, interior of skyscrapers without having steel. May 24th, 1883, officially renamed the People's Day in honor of the bridge, dawned fair and mild without a cloud in the sky. One of, I think, the striking events of that celebration day is the absence of the Irish. It was opened on Queen Victoria's birthday. The Irish saw that as an anti-Irish act, um, and they didn't attend. And a significant number of the people who built that bridge were Irish working class hacks who didn't make a lot of money and who never got a lot of credit. By noon, virtually every business in town had shut its doors. As tens of thousands of cheering New Yorkers looked on, President Chester A. Arthur and Governor Grover Cleveland led the grand procession down Broadway and up and over the Great Bridge. They were greeted on the other side by Brooklyn's mayor, Seth Lowe, and Emily Roebling, standing in for her husband, Washington, who was still too weak to attend. Later, the president and the governor called on the chief engineer at his home in Brooklyn Heights. Roebling was honored by the visit, but questioned the need for all the fuss and ceremony. Why can't they just put up a sign saying, the bridge is open, he said. The beautiful and stately structure fulfills the fondest hope. The impression upon the visitor is one of astonishment that grows with every visit. No one who has ever been upon it can never forget it. Not one shall see it and not feel prouder to be a man. Mayor Seth Lowe. 
It requires no spirit of prophecy to foretell the union of New York and Brooklyn. The river which divides them will soon cease to be a line of separation and, bestrode by the colossus of commerce, will prove a link which will bind them together. All afternoon, while the speeches dragged on, thousands of New Yorkers and Brooklynites ventured out onto the bridge for the first time, astonished by the beauty of the structure and by the glorious view, and to be so high above a river. Put yourself back in the place of a New Yorker or someone living in Brooklyn in the year 1884, 85, and you went on a Sunday afternoon out onto the Brooklyn Bridge. First of all, you were up higher than you'd ever been in your life because there were no buildings that high. And you were out over the salt water, over the East River, and seagulls were flying beneath you as they went underneath the bridge. And great, if you were lucky, great uh, sailing ships were coming up or down the river. And if they were really some of the big ones, like the clipper ships, they might be trimming their top gallants in order to get underneath the bridge. And steamboats and ferry boats and everybody out promenading on the boardwalk. Incidentally, a boardwalk, a promenade, that had never been part of a bridge before and has never been part of any bridge since. And it's built there for the purpose of giving people the experience of the thrill, the uncommon, unprecedented thrill of what can happen to you, what you can see and experience in a city. At dusk, the bridge was cleared, and the greatest firework display in the city's history began. For over an hour, fireworks streamed skyward from the bridge itself, from boats below, and from both shores, while still more were launched from gas balloons. At the astonishing finale, 500 rockets were touched off simultaneously blossoming in the night sky above the gorgeous structure. When the perfected East River Bridge shall permanently and uninterruptedly connect the two cities, the daily thousands who cross it will consider it a sort of natural and inevitable phenomenon such as the rising and setting of the sun. And they will unconsciously overlook the preliminary difficulties surmounted before the structures span the stream, and will perhaps undervalue the indomitable courage, the absolute faith, the consummate genius which assured the engineer's triumph. Thomas Kinsella, the Brooklyn Eagle, the mistake is to take a structure like that for granted, to assume that it's always been there, it just happened. What did it take to build that? Think of New York, if you don't want to think of the Brooklyn Bridge, think of all of New York as a metaphor for effort. Spectacular, unprecedented, often very original effort. Work, good work which is one of the promises of America. You come here, you can do good work, and you will be judged by the work you do. You can find pride and self-respect and identity through the work you do. You can be an actor. You can build a bridge. You can write the poem. You can make a million. That's the promise doesn't mean the promise will be fulfilled for everybody, but that's the promise. And no other society, no other place in the world had ever offered all of that. 